Hello there my friends, this is Nick with Daisy Opals. For this week's video, I've decided to make a pendant out of this stone. Hopefully you can pick up some new info or tip me off on ways that I can improve my own process. Um, I know a lot of you are scared to get into silver work, but it's really not that bad. It just takes some trial and error, and then it's super fun and rewarding. So here's what you'll need to do this at home. You'll need a fire brick so that if you miss with the flame, it doesn't burn down your house. You'll need this, it's called a second hand because you'll need both of your hands and you'll also need to position the pendant. You'll need a blowtorch. Make sure it's adequate because silver melts at 1,763 degrees Fahrenheit. And usually these blowtorches will tell you the highest temperature that they can reach, so make sure it's good enough. You'll need a burnisher. This is just to fold the silver over the bezel without leaving any nasty marks. That's why it has this, this smooth surface. You'll need tweezers, and I have two types of tweezers on deck. The normal type, and then this type that kind of squeezes automatically. I'm sure you could get away with either, but it's good to have both. I have these metal stamps. One of them tells you that it's 925 sterling silver. The other one tells you that it's made by Daisy Opals with this cool Daisy. Hopefully I remember to use them this time. You'll need silver solder pallions. This is basically your solder. I chose between hard and easy silver solder. Hard basically means it has more silver content, but it melts at higher temperatures, and easy has more copper to mix with the silver, but it melts at lower temperatures. I chose easy to reduce the risk of me melting any other silver parts, like I did with this ring. You'll need backing plate. Mine is six millimeters, and you can get these on Amazon. You'll need bezel wire. I prefer it to be about a millimeter higher than the stone itself, some people say two-thirds of the stone's height is just fine. You're also going to need a jeweler saw along with some beeswax for lubricant. There are other lubricants, but I love beeswax, so that's what I'm using. You need this thing to make your bezel right. I don't know what it's called. I got it from a jewelry supply store, though, and it's absolutely necessary. Lastly, you need an opal. This might work with other stones, but it won't look as good as an opal. I googled it, and it's a fact. So make sure you use an opal. I'm just kidding. Oh, and you're gonna need flux. I chose liquid flux over paste flux because I seem to be able to do better with it. So on to the first step, you're gonna have to make the bezel. You've gotta get the size right. Mine is way too big, too tall, but I wanna see what happens if I scrunch and flatten it. So I'm gonna get my length right and while I do that, I'm gonna make sure that the ends are straight so that when they line up, when they meet each other, they don't offset the bezel. When I form the bezel around the stone, I sort of have my own way of holding the stone in place. I let my elbows fly up and sort of use my whole body. I hope to get a ball vise soon though, one day. Supposedly, a ball vise would make this and many other steps of the process much easier. Next, you gotta connect the two sides, so paint them with flux and solder the two sides together. This is all about heating everything evenly. Once you're finished, throw it in your pickle. I make my own pickle, just one cup of white vinegar and one tablespoon of regular salt. I heat it up in the microwave for about a minute, and then I let the piece sit in the pickle for at least 15 minutes. I do not use this coffee cup for anything besides pickle, and I never will again. It has something to do with chemistry, you're welcome. Then I neutralize the piece with just baking soda and water for about five minutes. And now it's time for the back plate. I use the opal to trace onto the back plate and then I cut it with the jeweler saw, making sure to lubricate with the beeswax as I go. The beeswax makes it a lot easier. Make sure you leave a little extra room around the outsides for error. I always forget the stamp. I don't know how, but about half of my jewelry actually does not have the stamp on it because I keep forgetting to do it. I forgot to do it this time too. Anyways, now it's time to connect the bezel to the back plate. Firstly, make sure the back plate is flat. Put the bezel on top of it and try to check to see if any light is coming through. If it's not flat, this will be a huge pain in the butt later. Mine is fine, so now it's time to attach the bezel to the back plate. I paint my flux onto the back plate. 
I prefer to use this liquid flux rather than paste flux, but I've gotten good results with both. The paste just dries up kind of quick. It also will help you out to melt your pallions into little balls for this part. You just throw them on the fire brick and hit them with the heat. It's that easy. I think the spherical shape will help you distribute the solder a little better. Once you've got everything all placed out and ready, hit it evenly with the heat. If you're using anything metal to rest your piece on, start by heating that first. Try to heat it all as evenly as possible. That's the key. Then throw it in your pickle, into your baking soda, and if there's still scaling, scrub it a little bit with a brush and warm water. Now that that's all done, remove the excess around the outside. I kind of use my jeweler's saw to get off the bigger pieces, and then I do the rest with the 220 wheel. Makes it real easy and, and nice. Next we need a bale. You need a bale to actually attach your pendant to a chain or whatever you want to hang it on. You can order bales off of jewelry supply stores or even Amazon, but I'm going to go with something more handmade here so I'll be making my own bale. I just trace out this diamond shape onto the silver. I cut it out, clean it with my files, and then use whatever tools I have at my disposal to fold it over. And now it's ready to attach. This step caused me a lot of trouble. I tried and I didn't do it right the first time. If this happens to you, it means you've got to clean it up all over again. That means the pickle and then sanding off the spots that are going to make a connection. I actually failed twice, so I called my buddy Frank and he told me an awesome way to attach bales. What you do is you pre-place a small amount of solder onto the larger piece, in this case my cup. Then configure the bale and the cup so that they're pressing together and heat both of them evenly. Because the bale is so much smaller than the cup, it will heat up much faster. And because solder flows to the heat, it will travel right up to your bale and seal it nicely. This worked really good. Thank you, Frank. Throw it in the pickle again and scrub it again. Next, we're on to the smoothing process. The cup is mostly constructed here, and at this point I want to smooth out the sides and kind of almost polish them a little bit. It's just easy at this point to do it with the wheels. So I put it on the 600, and once I'm satisfied, it's finally time to put the opal in. We all know that my bezel is a little bit too tall, so I reduced it a little bit, but I still kept it kind of oversized because I want to sort of see what would happen if I smooth it down once it's all scrunched over. Kind of hard to explain, but you'll see later. If you did the bezel right and attached it perfectly vertical, your stone should slip right in. Hey, there we go. Mine did just fine this time, thankfully. Now it's time to burnish. So start in opposite areas so that you don't end up just pushing the stone around in a circle. Start from the bottom of the pendant and roll upwards. Otherwise, you'll just push over the top. Now it's all done, and you're probably thinking, damn, this looks awful, but my plan is not yet finished. It's time to make this all come together. 3,000 grit to the rim of the bezel. This is a huge trick taught to me by Mike from Opals by Mike makes the edges of your bezel look seamless to the opal. I had a lot of bezels, so I actually started with the 600. I tried to create a flat area along the rim of the bezel. I think it ended up looking really cool. And this is what I'm left with. I think all in all, it's pretty damn cool. I think to improve this, I want a ball vise. I want to make my bale wider so that more chains can fit through it. It's a little bit small. I want to put the bale lower so I can fully close the bezel without causing too much trouble but all in all i'm super happy i think this looks really cool i hope you guys enjoyed this and i hope you were able to take some information out of this and uh, i'll see you guys next week remember to like and subscribe it helps me a ton and i look forward to hearing from you all have a good week see you later